grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for our meditation this morning, today's gospel from Luke chapter 4, in the name of Jesus, amen. Words have meaning. They carry weight. Recently, our nation's president gave a speech about immigration, which was followed by a harsh response from the other side. This rhetoric isn't going away. The talking heads will keep right on talking. And we'll continue to listen. We'll listen very carefully to the things they say. They'll use a lot of the same words, by the way, but they won't necessarily mean the same things by them. Buzzwords, we call them. But what do they mean? What kind of weight do they carry? Some words have power only when the one saying them has the power himself. I could call up the National Guard and order them to mobilize, but they're not going anywhere. The president, however, could call the National Guard and things are going to happen in a hurry. Such is the case with our text. No words have greater power than the words spoken by God himself. No words have greater power than those coming from the one who created the world simply by a word of his mouth. The one who said, let there be light, is the same one who commanded the demonic spirit, be silent and come out of him. And he's the same one who says to you, your sins are forgiven. The word of the Lord is absolute. Light came out of darkness. The demonic spirit departed. And we are forgiven. And we joined the crowds in our text who were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority, he said, he commands the unclean spirits and they come out. Jesus came with authority and power, not as the scribes, but as the one who wrote and would later fulfill what scribes could only study. The one who with a word commanded the waves to be still and commands us to be still and know that he is God. By a single word, the Lord rebuked the demon and the man in the temple. By a single word, the Lord rebuked the fever that infected Peter's mother-in-law. By a single word, the Lord rebukes the sin that infects us. Our sins need the Lord's rebuke to make them depart from us. We need the Lord's rebuke too. For we are by nature sinful and unclean. Our Heavenly Father looks at us in the light of his law and with a single word condemns us. He declares us guilty. By a single word, he pronounces us worthy of eternal death and damnation. When Peter rebuked the Lord for predicting the crucifixion, the Lord rebuked Peter with a single word, get behind me, Satan, which is the word he has for all of those who are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. 
We pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And Luther explains that the good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer, and that God's will is done when he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature, which do not want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. Our sinful nature does not want to let God's kingdom come. Our sinful nature does not want God's will to be done. It doesn't even want to listen to the word and will of God. Our sinful nature wants to listen only to itself and to make itself our God. Our sinful nature utters many words but none of them has the power to free us from the bondage and curse of sin, no matter how many words we use to deny our dreadful condition. By a single word of ours, we can only condemn ourselves. By a single word of ours, we can only drive ourselves further into despair. By a single word of ours, we could only join the demonic spirits and fevers that the Lord rebuked and cast out. They were forbidden to speak by him, for they knew that Jesus is the Holy One of God, and he would not have the forces of evil confess his name, for they would only make a mockery of it. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God, will not allow those who don't believe in him to confess his name. This includes the devil and his band of demons, the world and our own sinful flesh. You see, our words have no power because we're not the creator, just creatures who have fallen into sin. Cyril of Alexandria once said that Christ would not permit the demons to confess him because it was not right for them to speak of the mystery of Christ with polluted tongues. When unbelievers damn our Christ with faint praise, they're doing so with polluted tongues. When we praise him with insincere hearts, we do so with polluted tongues. But by a single word, the Lord can declare the unclean to be clean. The prophet Isaiah saw the face of God in a vision and believed that he was going to die. He wrote, woe is me. For I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, a Lord of hosts. An angel of the Lord touched Isaiah's lips with a burning coal from the altar and said to him, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is purged. In our Old Testament today, uh, the young Jeremiah, called by the Lord, claimed not to know how to speak, for he was but a youth. The Lord, by his word, set Jeremiah apart as a called and ordained prophet before I formed you in the womb, he says, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. The ascended Lord spoke to Peter in a vision and said, what God has cleansed, you must not call unclean. 
Christian, by the word of the Lord, you are no longer unclean. You are no longer imperfect, no longer unholy, no longer mere sinners. You are cleansed, made perfect, holy, and saints before God. What is this word of the Lord that has such power? It's the word your crucified Savior spoke from the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And again, it is finished. By this word, Jesus Christ announced that he had won forgiveness and healing for the entire world. Christ, the Lamb of God, has taken away the sin of the world and has had mercy on us and grants us his peace. These words from the Lord's lips and his act of salvation are the central message of the gospel. God loved the world in such a way that he sent his only begotten son so that we who believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. This is the word of the Lord that he came to proclaim before the word became flesh. He sent his prophets to announce his coming so that the people of God would place their trust in him. He came into the flesh and declared that today is the day of salvation. Following his death, resurrection, and ascension, he sent his apostles to proclaim this good news so that Jews and Gentiles alike would place their trust in him who was, who is, and who is to come. For this reason, he has sent me and Pastor Jeru, his called and ordained servants to this place to preach his law and gospel, to announce to you the day of the Lord's favor, to declare to you that you are forgiven by a simple word. Of course, you've heard these words before. You heard them in the absolution this morning. And they're just as valid and certain, even in heaven, as if Christ our dear Lord dealt with us himself. The Lord has given us a simple word to speak to you. But it's a word packed not with the power of our promise, but of his. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Soon you will hear his word of comfort again as he invites you to his table. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Faith clings to these words and craves what they offer. They bring you healing for the sins that plague and terrorize you. You need not fear. Though Satan may assail you, he's been defeated. 
As the people in our text were astonished at the power of his word, we too are astonished at the power of God's word. Paul calls the gospel the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. The gospel is the power, for the Lord has filled it with his death and resurrection. Through the very word of the gospel, we are are forgiven, restored, and made clean. May you depart in peace today, knowing that your sins have been forgiven by the living and active word of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise.